So this is very special. I'm on the North Road in Gibraltar Tunnels. Uh, so the, the tour guide has allowed me to hang behind briefly so I can take this video. But this is just a stunning location. Coming in here to quickly look, um, this is the Calpy Hole Generating Station. Constructed in the 1950s, after the end of the Second World War, obviously, as backup power generation for the military sites and the critical civilian national infrastructure um, on the Rock of Gibraltar. I think there were about 32 miles of tunnels dug into the rock of Gibraltar, the majority of which were constructed during the 1940s of the Second World War, um, when effectively the island was taken over by military authorities. All civilians were evacuated um, and, and all activity on the, on the rock yeah, was military. The only civilians that could remain with those working in places such as the dockyards. This section of the tunnels is still under MOD ownership and tours and access is facilitated through uh, trained MOD guides. Uh, so Harry has been our guide today. And it's, 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 it's been a phenomenal experience. Um, having been in some of, the, some of the tunnels around London and around Kent that were area shelters, having recently been to the Short Factory, Short Brothers Factory in Rochester, a uh, series of area shelters and tunnels that were dug and completed before uh, war was declared in 1939. Um, these are the Gibraltar tunnels are just on an absolutely different scale. The tunnel we're walking through now, the concrete pillars, the power cables, these were all put in. This was all infrastructure that was put in when the generating station was complete. Uh, most of the tunnels are generally unlined. Uh, so we can see the, the limestone on the outside. Um, but there is some shot crete in some parts as well as some uh, some netting over the top to stop rock falls. Uh, we just have got to go through a gate into the next section. So I've now left the Calpy Hole generating station behind me and we're standing at the entrance to the Great North Road. This is about a mile and a half of tunnel. Um, it's been dug wide enough to get uh, trucks transiting through the rock. Uh, not much technical construction work on either side of it, um, but what there are um, are large, large indoor um, parking places. So the majority of the vehicles could be parked up inside uh, and protected inside the tunnel. The roads and junctions and areas within these tunnels have been given names, most of which um, are orientated around the Great North Road or the A1 as it is that runs north to south up uh, the east of England. This was to try and give a little bit of familiarity uh, to the troops that would have been deployed working here um, and at times living down here. I place reasonably well lit today. Um, this wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily always have been the case. Low wattage incandescent electric light bulbs uh, of 80 years ago. 
they would have been, been very dim places indeed. So this is, this is one of the large areas that would have been used for storage. Uh, it may have, may have been covered at one time, but it's, it's up on a raised, raised plinth. And these, these small annexes here offered some amount of relief or refuge if there was an explosion um, or the tunnel was under attack because this is a very long stretch of road you can see right up to the right and down to the left there'd be no refuge um, and the blast blast likes to travel along straight lines um, so any workers in this part of the tunnel um, could have taken taken refuge in there what's in front of us which is quite neat is anti-torpedo netting so this would have been spread across the entrance and um, probably between the moles um, that are right around the harbour the idea being um, that this would have, have essentially caught or, or detonated torpedoes before they could reach uh, the shipping in the fleet that was in harbour so now I've been been withdrawn, rolled up um, and stored in the tunnel. It is used um, elsewhere on the rock uh, to stop rock falls outside so it's, it's the piles have driven in uh, driven into the rock face with the, the old submarine net uh, you, uh, torpedo netting uh, on the outside it's very effective. Uh, so this, is, this is now where the, the electric lighting stops So more of this large storage areas. Along the tunnel. So the tunnels are, are generally dry and not, not terribly humid. Uh, but there is, and this, this water pipe that runs up um, up the edge of the tunnel, there is. No, oh, there are a number of leaks. Uh, there's one quite bad leak uh, that will come past. That's that's entering and introducing a lot of moisture into the tunnel. Oh, it's so silent down here, and just a beautiful temperature outside. It's it's probably about two o'clock in the afternoon now, and it's it's very hot. In the Mediterranean sun, but down here, apparently it's a it's a reasonably constant temperature, uh, day and night, uh, and throughout throughout the four seasons. And we can see up up on the wall some of the uh, some of the hooks and brackets that would have would have carried the, the communication telephone cables, and um, probably some. Some small bore water pipes as well as electricity. Still in use today, um, the, old, the old cables haven't been been removed. Uh, and then the yes, as I say the, the water pipe on the right, um, and some of this other uh, cable tray is, is new. So as the MOD relinquishes control over more and more sections of the tunnel uh, have been sold off to, to industry. Uh, we're going to pass, there's a, uh, there's a data center and server room for, um, for some casino and gambling companies. Um, up ahead in the old, uh, the old Comsen uh, command bunker. Uh, there's, a, there's a wine cellar, uh, I think that, that was the old naval communications um, centre is now now being being converted into a into a wine shelter shelter. And then we come to um, to one of the various junctions. So this is uh, this was known as magazine ramp. Um, and when they were when they were digging this, they came across a, um, a beautiful natural cave, uh, which can be accessed up there. Um, so they, they respected the cave, they, they stopped, uh, stopped tunneling in that direction and redirected. 
Uh, so that must, must have happened. You know, quite a quite a lot during tunneling as the as the limestone would dissolve uh, with the water over tens, hundreds of thousands of years. And all this all this rock, of course, that's been used uh, in the excavations uh, has been used to for, for construction over the centuries of buildings down and around uh, Gibraltar city centre itself, um, but also. Um, the expansion of the of the airfield, which was a, a grass strip at the start of the war, um, all this rubble was, was piled up and reclaimed from the sea uh, to form essentially the the runway that we know that we know today. So here's a another one of these. These natural caves. Uh, this one, I think, is called uh, Signalman, Signalman's Cave. Um, so they, I think this, the story goes, and I'm, I'm stealing this from from Harry, my tour guide. Uh, I think the story goes that a uh, Royal Signals junior soldier uh, crashed his vehicle into the side of the, uh, the side of the tunnel, and, and obviously caused some damage and re revealed that cave. So there are certainly different, that's very noticeable, you know, different, different smells, different temperatures uh, throughout the tunnel. Uh, so here we're in Peterborough Chamber and you can, you can see the arched, the arched roof uh, of this, this chamber, uh, which would have been, been storage, I believe. Um, I think it was used um, in recent years uh, by the police apparently for, for compounded for compounded vehicles. Um, but by making it secure, they um, yeah they blocked off the airflow, and all of a sudden mould and rot started to set in to the to the seized vehicles. Uh, this is this is just a a quick di a cheeky diversion into into the kitchen. And this is this is a stunning, stunning part of the tunnel tour. Um, so we have the, the cast iron kitchens. These would have been coal fired. Uh, the coal coming down from a chute, coal coming down in chutes um, in bags up the top. Uh, we have these two huge, there were three, um, Le Creuset cast iron soup pots. Uh, so stove, the heat at the bottom. Uh, and then yes, the the super broth in the middle. I've got a water tank up there. Um, but this must must have been a very very claustrophobic, hot, smelly place to work. Whenever the the coal fired cookers were uh, were on the go. Yeah, that's Peterborough. Peterborough David. I <laughs> nearly got lost there. Hopefully you didn't you didn't notice. And the idea is there are these these, these chambers, of which there are four, uh, are connected along the Great North Road at the front. Um, but also at the back, um, they're joined I think in pairs. Um, there would have been been Nissen Hudson buildings uh, erected inside these. Uh, so you can see uh, Peterborough. Peterborough Chambers on the sign. Peterborough, obviously, been up on the on the A1 on the Great North Road. Yeah, now we can't we can't get in quite at the moment, but the brigade headquarters uh, bunker is just just through there. Uh, and I believe it was discovered that through the brigade headquarters, um, you could access with an additional tunnel after it was dug. You could access the back of the Rock Hotel, so the senior officers staffing the brigade headquarters had quick and easy access to the Rock, Rock Hotel. So 
we're coming in to some of the larger chambers at the end. And this, this would have been huge amounts of vehicle parking, probably two or three abreast. Also coming up to the water leak, so this is where it gets uh, rather damp. And you can hear that, hear that water jetting out of the out of the pipes. Otherwise, a very, very dry climate controlled tunnel. If it wasn't for the hundreds of litres that are flowing into it. So I think, I think the scale of these tunnels is difficult to really get an appreciation of. You know, I've been walking, if I look at the timer, I've now been walking reasonably fast on the Great North Road for 13 minutes. Um, and I've still a, still a good way to go before I get to the entrance. Just miles and miles of tunnel. Here's more of that submarine net that we can see on the ground. And yes, if we, if we look at the ceiling, we can see some of that. chicken wire as it's as it's nicknamed on the roof um, and I think when I when I find a shot Crete portion which I think there is up here uh, we can we can stop and take a look the modern tunnels is in the 19 40s tunnels never having really been put to the test as far as naval bombardment or um, some air raids but not very effective. Uh, here we have Monsell's wing uh, so this is what's now the the data centre oh, Monsell's wind sorry uh, now a data centre sealed off um, I think more for thermal uh, issues as the the outputs from the from the service of the racks was, was heating up the tunnel too much and there was there was concern about the geology and the damage it would do so it's now now extracted and, and vented outside. Uh, this this pile these considerable steel doors these were some of the original blast doors and you can see where the where the gas axe has, has chopped them up. So we're probably talking three sections of two inch thick, um, one and a half inch thick steel. So very considerable blast doors. So the, the creaking's a bit disconcerting. Uh, it's just, uh, I believe, thermal expansion of the um, of the plastic or composite water pipe uh, that runs the length of the tunnel. This, this, the scale, you know, can we just appreciate the scale of this? You know, this is a vast ne network of tunnels. This would have been rammed with vehicles. Everything, you know, everything necessary for the, for the efficient day-to-day -day running of the, of the rock, as well as, as for the defense of the rock. And tens, 14,000, I believe, uh, troops could have been accommodated down here. Coming up 
towards the end of this tour. And we are at the start of the Great North Road. We've walked all the way from the Calpy Hole Hospital and Generating Station. Um, and we're now at the start of the Great North Road. And there's one feature just before we leave and end this tour that I want to point out. Uh, and it's these, uh, these recesses, um, which are blast traps cut into the, into the rock. So if we, if we make our way to the entrance, we can see what, what effect these, was, these would have had. So should the entrance come under bombardment, um, or should there be um, explosions at the, at the entrance to the tunnel? Uh, blast like straight lines. So it comes in the entrance, it hits a blast trap, um, and that suppresses um, any blast. Any residual blast comes down this corridor and hits a blast trap here. And these would be filled with soft absorbed materials, with sandbags filled with sand. So the blast is absorbed there. Any residual blast is reflected into the blast trap down here. And then any residual blast goes up um, into the tunnels. Uh, a straight entrance, uh, straight out to the outside, that blast will propagate down the tunnel. Um, and that, that blast will be able to travel miles down the tunnel, causing damage. Um, yeah, damage to the people, damage to the, the tunnels itself, the grading structure. So, this is, which is about the exit, um, made of ale, um, on the great North Road. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this has certainly been a, a privilege tour, uh, facilitated by the, uh, by the MOD. Thank you very much um, for allowing us in here. Um, and yes, don't forget, uh, like and subscribe if you like this 360 content. Um, check out some of the other videos in the channel. If not, um, thank you very much and see you in the next video.